Streams. And welcome back to the channel. And this is part three of turbo LS swapping a Mustang drag car and trying to build a whole entire car from what you see here, which is pretty much not even a rolling shell anymore because Sean just pulled out the axle. And we're trying to take this thing on Rocky Mountain Race Week, which is on June 18th and it is June 6th. So over the weekend, I actually came down here. One of my buddies, he owns a business. It's called the Steel City Mustangs. And what he does is he parts out Mustangs. So he does a lot of stuff. Tons of stuff with Fox Bodies, SN95, all the way up until like 06. He had like a 2014. I think he even had a 2015 for a he little bit. A lot of older stuff as well. So this is actually a 8.8 rear end with a five lug out of an SN95. So it's out of a 94, which I guess is good because the brake lines. It looks like it has some sort of limited slip in it because it, uh, it spins all the way around. Also, we got five lug front hubs off of a 96 or 98 because it has the dual piston. Five lug hug spi hubs, spindles, and then the knuckle, essentially. Rear disc brakes, which is cool. So we're doing five lug disc brake, buddy. We have the brake master cylinder and the proportioning valve, which I think is nece necessary to swap over. And then he actually gave me a little bit of a bonus too. I asked him, hey, do you have any cow hoods? He's like, well, I have this one. It's kind of kind of junk. So you can see this is a stock hood that somebody molded on a thing and it's actually not even cut. So it's kind of pointless, but it looks cool. We might cut it out, we might, I don't know. Oh, we're, we're for sure gonna cut it out. But now we just need to do a little bit of body work on that thing. Sean got the four lug rear end out of here. We have all the four lug stuff off of the car. Most of the interior is stripped out of it because the cage is gonna be here in a couple days. Sean is now removing all the rear suspension arms as well as the fuel tank because we have a full Detroit's fuel system. In that box right there, we are waiting on some stuff from Holly for their truck fuel rail kit. We're waiting on the ECU from Holly. We are getting a Terminator X, which I'm really stoked about. Over in this box right here, we have a Transgo 4L80 kit uh, we have a torque converter coming we have a texas speed camshaft and valve springs and a bunch of other stuff coming uh, we have a radiator garrett is actually back he's on his way back today with the exhaust manifolds he got them cut off and we figured out a thing for the belt tensioner and everything in the front so buddy things are moving right along like there is so much stuff happening right now it's just crazy so maybe by the end of this video we should have this turbo so we are working with garrett on this uh this build this is a garrett g42 1200 I am super stoked on. That is really cool. And we are using their new uh, Garrett gate. They're not calling it a waste gate. It's called the Garrett vent or something like that. So, so we got some things. I mean, honestly, this is pretty crazy. Where's the ladder? The ladder is, yeah, this uh, is, wow, this is, the shop is looking great. The van is looking great. Look at the van, Sean. Lots of progress, lots of things in the works. The fuel tank is almost done. Look at that. So things are moving along. Keep you guys updated as we go along. All right, guys. So Sean got the fuel tank out of here. I don't think that fuel pump and those lines are going to support 800 horsepower. Do you think? No, not at all. Trying so to be the window guy. Trying to be the window guy that you're not? Yeah. Oh, well, you're doing it, though. Where'd you learn that technique? The window uh, guys. The window guys, yeah. Window guys. I think they have a little bit more. Well, they have like, it's like a spatula. I actually have something that's like similar to that. I just don't know where it is. So the window is coming out. It was already pretty cracked. I think uh, they actually have one here for the junkyard. It's in that other building. So windshield is gonna come out. Cage should be here in three days. But in the meantime, we're just waiting for Garrett to get here to work on this Garrett. Guys, so Garrett made it out here today. What do you got going on? So we found a random mechanical tensioner that I think we're gonna try to put to use most of it. To kind of cut it up, clean it up, we're gonna make that work. So to do that, we needed to make a bushing so that Custom. now works with 
the pulley. So that'll bolt on. I think we've got to do something a little bit different with that uh, spacer there, maybe a little bit bigger, longer. This will end up bolting in here, sitting about like that. And then on the plasma table, I went ahead and cut a plate that's gonna bolt into place there as well. You just weld Pick that, that, on that up. unit. Exactly, that's gonna be our tensioner. Yeah, I like simple it. Simple as it gets, so. I like it. Garrett basically saved me 200 bucks from not having to order, order a bracket and then wait for him. And wait. we have that pretty much figured out. Now we just are moving on to the turbo manifolds. So we got the manifolds. These are just the truck manifolds. I just kind of showed these in the last video. So we went ahead and cut these guys off. We're gonna bolt them up and see if we have the room to do a V-band right off the manifold. If not, we were talking about doing like some cast stainless elbows to kind of redirect them where they need to be. We're gonna get that in place and then that is really gonna make the decision on how things are gonna be routed and located. And where we're gonna put the turbo. I like the turbo over here. Well, like we were talking the other night, I think it's gonna be, make the most sense. You know, as simple as the suspension is, we don't have a lot of craziness going on. That'll kind of help with weight too on the front end mm -hmm. over here from lifting that left front. You know, you always have the, the future plan for AC if that happens. Yep, and we have AC. Hey, Sean, that is a nice shirt. Hey, you wonder, I wonder where you got that thing, right? I it's made yours. that one. Thank you. Made the one you're wearing. Thank you. All right, it's a little update for you guys. Me and Garrett were figuring out the position of this Garrett right here, trying to get it kind of clocked and basically just figure out what is gonna be the best thing for the amount of time that we have, but like where's a good placement where we're not gonna wanna redo it later because it's just so good. And we also don't have the material here, so we had to order parts and kind of plan everything around that. Garrett made that alternator bracket. He got that thing tacked up and on here, so that should be good. Basically what this will do is the belt will run right here and this tensioner, manually tension it right there, which is good. The turbo is over here. Our coolant lines are gonna be over here. The radiator, this is not our radiator, but we're just kind of using it for mock-up purposes right now. Our inlet and outlet will be over here, switching to an LS1 style or F-body Camaro uh, front thing, and that actually comes straight out instead of up here on the top. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a hole here in the inside, and this is where our intercooler piping is gonna go. We are going to build a little Y right here, and we are actually going to delete the sway bar get rid of those brackets, get all that stuff out of the engine bay. The turbo's pretty much gonna be placed right here and then we're just gonna do a little hood exit right there. Should work out pretty well. We should still be able to have a air filter right here because the turbo will go over a little bit more. And like I said, we were basically out of material. We didn't have the correct material that we actually wanted to use for this project. So we actually ordered it from a local place where we should be able to pick it up tomorrow morning. So we should be able to get some welds and some other stuff down here. So Sean was actually over here working on the rear axle. So this is the little axle brace that we have. You can see he got it tacked on over here. Got these things bolted in and I guess with these 488s or you know, I guess any axle that you're putting a lot of power to, we welded the housings and we're putting in this brace right here to uh, keep it from bending or doing things that they do. And we have a full uh, axle kit and a spool coming. Uh, we also got these uh, bushings right here. So these are you know, more of a spherical bushing instead of the stock bushings. So that'll help out a little bit. So Sean is pretty much getting this rear axle prepped. Today is Monday evening. We got a ton of stuff today. Just a bunch of little little things really all the stuff that i knew i could order instantly and not regret later not like the big purchases like a bunch of tubing and stuff so the stuff from holly shipped today a bunch of stuff shipped today so i'm really stoked on pretty much everything it's really crazy that i've been able to actually kind of pull this thing off i did drive the super down here today actually needed to swap some parts off of this thing so our last giveaway which was the is 300 uh, the winner actually lived in florida and he wanted to actually drive out here and pick up the car himself with a trailer and just so happened he told me it was gonna be like the first week of next month. I thought he meant like the first week of May, but it was actually the first week of June. So we had basically like a month gap uh, where basically we're just kind of holding the car for him or kind of keeping it over here. So one of the things that the car actually has been needing for a little while and we haven't really had a whole chance to do is to put a coolant temp gauge and some other gauges and stuff on the inside of it. And so that's where uh, Super comes in. So inside the Super, obviously this thing is on an ECU master just like the IS300. And what we have in here now is actually this BTI. It's a three and a half inch touchscreen gauge, which is really, really cool. This thing is super cool. What I had in here previously was this thing. So this is another BTI gauge. And what it does is it goes off of the CAN system on the ECU. So you can see we have air fuel, map, 
map pressure, intake air temp, like we would have oil pressure, ethanol content, fuel pressure, coolant temperature, all that stuff all built in. It does a bunch of stuff. It does like some logging, so it'll do like peak temperature if you're going down like the quarter mile and a bunch of stuff like that. So it'll do like a freeze frame. Like I always use this one in the Civic. I was actually supposed to put this touchscreen in the Supra like almost a year and actually two years ago before we took this car to SEMA, didn't have time. So I basically left this one in it. But since the 2JZ Mustang and the Civic were both on an ECU Master and I wanted some extra gauges, I literally just pulled out this thing and was swapping it between the Civic and the Mustang and just kind of back and forth because I didn't need a whole lot of that stuff with the Supra. So now is essentially the perfect time to put this thing in. It shows a bunch of pages and a bunch of stuff on here. You could go up and down, change between all the things and I'll show you guys that once we get it wired into the IS300. It saves you tons of space. BTI gauges, he actually makes these things for ECU Master, AEM, some stock cars, a bunch of other stuff. He has a five inch dash, a seven inch dash. He has a four and a quarter uh, version of this, which is actually a little bit bigger than this thing that is coming out here soon for the Mark IV Supra. Anything that the ECU can read, you could read it on this thing right here, which is really cool. So like always, last minute Trevi. So we'll be installing this thing in the car and uh, getting this thing all dialed in. Got to get it washed. It's a little bit dusty from sitting in here inside the shop. He will be here tomorrow kind of go over the car with him and do some other stuff like that. The next day. All right, guys, so day three of this video. So we are, turbo is pretty much, that's it, right? Dude. Around there, not exactly, but in order to get kind of what we're trying to do is we're trying to scoot it, scooch it over just a smidge. But in order to do that, we need to cut a hole in the fender. I have some big four inch hole saws. If you just want to- have a body saw? I do. I think a body oh, yeah. saw would be just as quick. Just up and over and fall down. It doesn't have a good blade in it though. We got a bunch of tubing. We got a bunch of piping. We got some things. We got some stuff. Yeah, 135 degree. Got some 45s. We have some V-bands. The exhaust manifold. We have this unit, extra thick. You know, it's like schedule 10. So we have this thing, this is a schedule 40. So Garrett already made a line on there, basically gonna cut it into two 45s and we're gonna do two, a 45 on each side. So the passenger side, now that we're getting rid of the sway bar, we don't really need to modify that at all. We're basically gonna just weld a V-band straight to the cast manifold there. We're gonna try to just do one 45 on this driver's side. As long as it pushes the flange forward and clears what we're planning for an up pipe, then we're just gonna leave it at that. The extra 45 is just in case we got to move it someplace else. We're gonna have a little bit of an interference with the up pipe and that exhaust outlet on the manifold. So we're just gonna work around that. Do you wanna take a manifold home tonight? Uh, and, I was and thinking about that as a possibility. As long as we get the hole cut in this and then we kind of mock everything up, I think we could definitely take the manifolds, weld on, at least tack on the flanges so we can kind of put them in place. You can see that happening. You already have that thing to build the collector, right? Oh, no, it's just going to be hand formed. The B band home, though? Oh, yeah. That is yeah. So what that's going to end up being too is we'll do an up pipe that's going to kind of shoot up in this direction. And then at this last turn here, I'm probably going to do a three inch 45 degree elbow and then the V-band and then into the turbo from there. So we'll make a collector and do it that way. So now that the sway bar is not being used, that's opened up some, a lot of possibilities. I can't get to drill in there, so I'm using this guy in the belt. The belt's not doing too good, so I need to go find some more. Ready? How do you have the measurement though? Because it's one to one in the scanner. It's custom. So I'll put it on a piece of paper, <laughs> scan it, and then this is a one to one dimension. So when I scan it in, I'll just build my CAD file on top of it, and then that'll all work. So off of a picture? Yeah. It has the dimensions from a picture. Well, just, yeah. I'll. So you don't have to take a tape measure and measure yeah. that to that. Do you want a piece of uh, printer paper? You can stick that to it? It'd be good, yeah. So okay. then get all balled up. We, we need to get this thing on the dyno too. That's the other thing. It's going to be on the dyno. It's going to get tuned. It's got to. 
we gotta test it out, we gotta do some things. Today is the seventh. We tell you have nine days. And those four points are the important thing. Oh hey. Uh, so Garrett just left. He has a plan for the turbo setup as far as the uh, exhaust and stuff like that goes. So he went home to do some stuff. He has a plasma table and stuff there. So anyways, still kind of waiting on a bunch of parts. The cage is supposed to arrive tomorrow. So I'm going to pull the dash out, kind of clean some stuff up. There is a bunch of, what do they call that stuff? Sound deadening. So, oh yeah, that's a sound deadening right here. Basically where the front part of the cage is going to weld to the chassis. So I'm going to get the dash out, get some of the wiring stuff cleaned up that we're not going to be using. That was the old wiring for the car, like the whole engine harness and stuff like that. Get that taken out, get the dash removed and then basically have it prepped for tomorrow. So when the cage gets here, we can start mocking it up and getting it welded in. We're back on it today and we made some pretty good progress uh, to this point. Last time I was out here, I was making a pattern for a turbo support bracket because I really think that's a fundamental part, especially on a turbo that big and heavy to not rest it on the exhaust parts. So just out of some tape, I made a quick template. I think there might be some video of that. And then it turns into this. Literally some tape, stuck it to a piece of paper, scanned it into the computer, and then made a CAD file on top of that, cut that this morning. So pretty much ready to start rolling. It's all tacked up now, and you can see it's kind of just hang hanging on its own. So take it off, go weld it on the bench, and then we can really start plowing on some of the exhaust tubes and routing since we know nothing's really gonna move with that hot side now. guys so a little update on what Sean is doing over here so we got these little tabs fully welded yeah everything's ready to go yeah you everything's the, ready to rip support tab welded, see, welded around the, the entire you missed a spot though well I just couldn't get to it because the, these but I'm gonna pull them off and do it anyway so so we've got to weld some more stuff on here. Yeah, anyhow. exactly. What we're doing now is this is a stock rear end out of a SN95 or a 94-95 Mustang GT. So it's an 8.8 rear end, but they have, I think, are these 31 spline axles or 28? They're probably no. 31. Yeah. The thing with axles is the more splines you get, I guess the stronger they are. I put in a rush order over at uh, Strange. So Strange, I don't know if it's Strange Engineering, but this is a set of their 35 spline axles with a solid spool in the center with the C-clip eliminators and a full uh, axle rebuild kit with the paste and all that stuff. Should have the shims to be able to shim this thing out and get it uh, nice, true, and correct. With doing, you know, this rear axle upgrade and the front spindles and stuff off of a 96, we will be getting the five lug, which is really cool. Sean is basically gonna pull out uh, these axles now, pull out the C-clips right here, throw the spool in it, throw the new bearings in it, do all that stuff, take the gears off of that, put it on that thing, and uh, we should be ready to rip for race week, so. I see that uh, GTR all the time. Yeah. Yep. Well, I think there's another one in. Is there? Like that. I don't know. I just got this one like two months ago. Huh? So. Beauty. Yeah. Thank you, man. No front wheels yet because they had they were actually out of stock of the size that I ordered, so we had to get some other ones. So these are the Jegs wheels. They're kind of a cheaper wheel, but it's a great way to get slicks on the back of your car. You're in my, you're in my sleeping area. Oh, sorry. Yeah, are you ready? What did we get? Ready for him, Charles? Ooh! Those are sick. They're not bad. I mean, especially for the price, they're pretty pretty reasonable. So, we could pair those with these Johnnies right there. Wonder how that's gonna work. All right, so we got some bad news. We came over here and we were stoked to get everything on. Uh, so the wheels that we, we ordered are 5x114. The car is a 5x114. And so the wheels are correct. Then we took our axle. So this is the big dog axle. I mean, look at that thing. 35 That's spline, big, old big dog. I mean, that 
That's that's a pretty big dog. We were like trying to see how it would fit with the lug nuts, cause like that's a five eight stud. That's a big that's a big dog. So we tried to see if it would fit through there, and uh, so it's actually the wrong bolt pattern. Axles are five by four and three quarters, and the car, the Mustang stuff, is five by five by four and a half. So five by one fourteen technically, but this is technically the wrong thing. So this is what like Camaro bolt pattern, right? Like five by one twenty. So essentially, I think this is like a Camaro style axle, which would make sense because people put these axles in Camaros and they probably just got, grabbed the wrong one off of the shelf. So now we're kind of in a pickle because, you know, obviously we don't have a rear end in the car yet. And Sean is pretty, getting pretty close with all that stuff. But now we have to decide, do we order a different set of wheels to fit the axle and continue getting it all put together? I mean, I would much rather have the 5x114 because I have so many 5x114 wheels. So if we have like, we wanna bring a spare wheel or a spare whatever, we could be able to put those on there and then it's it's like a Mustang. Essentially we got, I guess, kind of sent the wrong parts, which they were they were rushing too to send this stuff out because I was just like, hey, we kinda need it. And they're like, okay, we'll get it out as fast as we can. And they did, which I appreciate, but yeah, we this-, all this what, We so, all know what being Russians mean, but yeah. Yep. yep. Well, this is the issue with like doing this last minute stuff is like if one little mistake happens, like let's say everything like this, we got this like the night before, at least right now we have a 10 days, nine days or whatever before we have to leave. Now we have a chance to get parts, but like imagine if this was three days before we were supposed to leave, getting some wheels off of Craigslist Well, this is bound something. to happen again with the three days before we leave something, but hopefully not. Yeah, I think that's, that's the update so far. I guess we'll, then it's like six o'clock at night too, so that nobody's open to talk to them, so. We probably get the wheels quicker than we could get the axles, but then you know, I would just rather have the right axles. Alright, so Garrett has some ideas. Mm, ideas. So kind of we're looking at about something like that. I mean, we've got a lot of cutting and, and fitting to do, but we're kind of approaching at least closer to an equal length. It's not going to be exact. Yeah, definitely. So that'll be a little bit nicer. The big reason for the current plan was for wastegate location. If we did one short side manifold straight to the turbo, we'd have to figure out a place to put two wastegates because the way it was going to work out, or we we're going to have to try to drill and weld into the turbine housing and these are so thick that it would be kind of a nightmare job to do something like that. Look pretty cool, but it'd be a pain in the butt. So now we're gonna do a long collector down in this area so that we can kind of come up with a, a wastegate somewhere in about that area and shoot it up right next to the exhaust as it dumps out the hood. So it should make things a lot easier, a little bit equal, closer to equal length. So it kind of all worked out for, for the better that way, I think. All right guys, so a little bit of a situation with those wheels, but we're gonna get that figured out within the next day or so. Garrett went ahead and took some of the stuff, basically the collector that he's building back to his house. He has a press and some dies to kind of basically make that oval shape into the round thing for the three inch V-band. So that way we could get this whole crossover and everything figured out. So he's gonna go do that. I think he's gonna cut some more stuff. They kind of play with a couple more things at his house. And then he's actually gonna come back probably either later tonight or if not, then just tomorrow. And then hopefully tomorrow we should have this full turbo kit all uh, basically tacked into place how it should be. So you guys are stoked on uh, the progress that we've made. And I know it doesn't look like we made a whole lot, but we've got like the groundwork to just go like full steam ahead as soon as like all the parts are here. So the cage should be here tomorrow. We got the dry ice for the cage. We're doing a bunch of stuff. There's just so much stuff to do in such a short amount of time. But if you guys are stoked on this project, be sure to hit that like button on this video. Subscribe for more. See you guys in the next one.